In my previous video, I showed how to get Fallout 4 running under Parallels on the Apple M1 CPU. In this video, I will show that modding is not only possible, but easy with Parallels. However, because of the low frame rates involved, I do not recommend graphical mods at all. Here you can see the Mod Manager Vortex is running and fully compatible with Parallels. I should note that Mod Organizer 2 does not work with Parallels at all. In the center, you can see some of the modding tools that I've installed for Fallout. I have not tested all of these yet, but the Fallout 4 script extender does work flawlessly. Here you can see the mods I've installed, including a holstered weapon mod and a wheel menu. While I have not had time to test this extensively, these few mods do work perfectly. I expect that most other gameplay mods will also work fine. Here you can see the plugins associated with each mod. Note that the sorting function and the auto sort does seem to work properly. Now I will start the game and demonstrate how well these mods do work under parallels and show that they work perfectly fine. For our test run, we're going to go to the Corvega factory and clean up the raiders nested there and take out their leader. Despite this Mac's rather fast SSD, load times are unfortunately rather slow under parallels. All of these mods were installed normally, exactly as if they were on a PC. No special modification or tweaks were needed to get them to install properly. The notable exception was Mod Organizer 2, which would install but would not load mods correctly. As a substitute, Vortex works fine. Here I will demonstrate the wheel menu in use. You can see as I circle through the wheel, I can pick up various menu options and inventory items. And now we'll head off to the Corvega factory to take out some Raiders. I've already cleared out the outside of the factory so there's no one to fight out here. As we go inside, however, you'll see that there are plenty of Raiders still inside the factory. Here you can see the Mac menu bar showing that I am running under parallels on Mac. Of the weapons I have, I will choose to use the Deliverer. It is a very powerful 10mm pistol, more than ample for taking out these low-level raiders. I came to this factory much earlier in the game, and they're spawned at much lower levels than I am currently. This character is currently level 57, and I believe most of these raiders are in the level 5 to 10 range. While this automatic pistol is fun to use, the deliverer is usually more effective. Here you can see the mod configuration menu in use. It is a function of Fallout 4 script extender, and here I can configure the few mods that I have installed already. On the settings window, you can see the Fallout 4 script extender version and the fact that it is indeed active. And once again, here we have the wheel menu in use, selecting different inventory items. One of the reasons I'm using this weapon for this demonstration is that I have ample 10mm ammo and have no issues spraying raiders with lots of bullets. Since there is a certain amount of latency involved in using emulation, sometimes it is advisable to use VATS. And here I'm doing that to try and hit this Ritter, although he's hiding behind this pylon here. 
Most of the time, however, free aim works perfectly fine. Because I'm using a pistol here and the distance to the target is great, VATS is not a great option here. However, the long distance also makes free aim difficult. And indeed, I need to close the distance to kill the turret. On some PC hardware, the lockpick menu can be very slow and sluggish, but here under Parallels it's running quite fluidly. That's it. And once again another demonstration of the wheel menu in action. Unfortunately, this one is not quite as useful as the one in Fallout 4 VR and Fallout 76. This particular mod is configured via an XML file, and I have not explored various options like expanding the size of it or other sorting options. Ada's voice is distorted by the fact that the mod does slow time, so you have time to sort through the inventory. Once again, these raiders are rather low level, so the liberator is taking them out very quickly and easily. And here I'll demonstrate the holster mod in use. You can see the pistol holstered at my character's side. And we're going to switch out to a few rifles and other weapons so you can see how they look with this character. They will clip through the back of his armor because he is wearing bulky metal armor chest piece. I will now take off the character's chest piece so you can see how the rifles look when they're slung across the user's back without anything clipping through them. I have not yet investigated this mod to see if there's a way to prevent the clipping from happening or to make the model of the weapon appear farther out from the character's back. And finally, if you found this video useful or entertaining, please like or subscribe.